Well, it's a bright sunny day where I am and uh, actually I can look out the window and see the beach and so it looks like a great time to talk about organizing for security. And so we're now moving into uh, chapter five. We're going to talk about uh, how do we uh, build a security uh, organization within a uh, corporation and what are the components and what are the different models that you can use for doing that. Uh, here's the agenda in the uh, overarching uh, slideshow. I've already talked in a separate video about the uh, final exam. And so in this video, we're going to move forward and start looking at those organizational approaches uh, to security within the organization. But uh, it wouldn't be, you know, uh, one of these presentations unless we went back to, yep, you got it, the CNSS model, just to keep that at the forefront, that confidentiality, integrity, availability of information, policy, education, and technology, and then storage processing and transmission, those different stages where you want to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. So this should be old hat, five chapters now where you've seen this slide. You should be very comfortable with it. When you, when you go to sleep at night, you should see the cube just floating, counting cubes, counting CNS. Wait, wake up, wake up, don't go to sleep. We're at the beginning of the video, not the end. Uh, let's look at objectives again and for this particular lesson. So we're going to look at organizational approaches associated and here are the different components associated with that. How do you plan and staff an organization? What are internal and external factors and to, to uh, consider? Looking at your typical job titles and functions uh, within that organization. And then some components of a security uh, education training and awareness program and, and how you manage those particular uh, uh, projects. So going to be a great chapter uh, to look at with these uh, kind of uh, uh, objectives there. Uh, let's go into our uh, introduction now. So you're going to use security program to, to uh, describe this whole set of this you know, list of personnel and plans and policy and initiatives related to information security. So it's a whole idea. So when we talk about information security uh, program, it's everything. What's the structure? What's the organization? Who reports to whom uh, within that organization that allows you to uh, be effective? And there are a couple of different variables that you have to consider when you're starting to build this. Uh, let's look at a couple of those now. First of all, organizational culture. Uh, we've talked about this throughout all the videos, but really the security program has to be aligned with the intent of the CEO and the organization. And some of those uh, cultures are going to be a win-lose culture. Some of those are going to be uh, based on merit. Some of those are going to be based on you come in at the lowest level and work all the way up hierarchical. So you've got to figure out what your organizational culture is. How, how do you get things done within your particular company? And then once you know how you get things done, that's what organizational culture is, then you can organize security so that it's effective within that culture. Something that's very effective in one company may not be effective in another company based just on that culture. Second component is size. If you're looking at very large companies, you're going to have lots of folks involved with security. Looking at very small companies, there may be one person uh, and uh, that person is doing everything. They have to uh, assume all the roles within here, which uh, may create some conflict of interest. And so you, you've just got different characteristics associated with it uh, uh, when you look at size. Uh, budget, now how much money you have for people and how much money you have for capital uh, uh, will limit who you can uh, attract to work within your company and what they can do. You, if you don't have a lot of technical to, uh, tools, you're going to have to use education, training, and awareness, and policy uh, to address the needs of your organization. So if you don't have the budget to buy those technology tools, you're not going to be able to uh, um, uh, uh, use that arm as well. Um, generally, as uh, organizations increase in size, their security departments become more and more taxed in terms of trying to deal with that organizational structure and address all of those uh, particular needs. All right, let's uh, continue and look at some other kind of considerations for organizing for security. Um, you want to uh, probably build some internal groups that address different components. So you may have somebody working on privacy or a group working on privacy, another group uh, working on security, another group working on risk management. Um, you may have another group working on uh, uh, response. So you, you, you want to split things down as you go along and then again smaller organizations are just going to have 
uh, 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 smaller staffs associated with dealing with what they're trying to address. All right, let's start talking now at the top end of the scale. Let's say that we've got a very large organization. Um, here you've got more than 10,000 computers. That's the definition that we're using for a very large organization. Security budgets are going to grow faster than IT budgets because of the risk and complexity associated with that. Uh, you're you're going to have some challenges uh, here in terms of how much money you've got and, and how effective you are. So you're going to have to be judicious with whatever funding you've got. Even though it looks on paper like you've got a lot of money, you don't have a lot of money compared to, to what smaller organizations uh, may be doing. But you should be able to realize some economy of scale associated with deploying uh, security to that very large group. Typically, uh, very large organizations do a better job in policy and resource management, and about a third uh, have handled uh, incidents in agreement with their incident response plan. Hopefully, you're one of those third. Uh, it is the first thing you should start to focus on. All right, well, we've talked about some of the characteristics with very large organizations and the challenges they have. They're going to have some challenges with complexity. They're going to have large budgets, but they typically spend less per user. Uh, of that budget. Their budgets will tend to grow faster than the general IT budget. They tend to do a good job in policy and resource management. Uh, they tend to be challenged in incident response because, uh, to be honest, a lot of incidents are going on. All right, let's look at uh, large organizations. Large organizations we've defined as between 1,000 and 10,000 computers. Again, their security approach, like very large organizations, should be mature, integrated uh, planning and policy into the organizational uh, uh, culture. Uh, they don't always put uh, a lot of uh, resources into the security program, um, and they tend to spend proportionally less than, say, smaller uh, institutions. So you got to be careful uh, in, in that group in terms of how are you going to uh, deploy something. Let's take this now and explore this with a little bit more detail and look at one particular approach associated with security in a large organization. So uh, one approach, you kind of split it into four different lanes, if you will, or four different areas. One is going to be you know, those functions uh, related to security that are performed by non-technology business units outside of IT, uh, those functions performed by IT groups outside of information security, those, uh, formed, uh, those functions performed within information security department as customer service, and then those functions that are performed within information security as a part of compliance. So again, if you're working in a large organization, this may be how you start to organize uh, your structure, looking at security in these four lanes, compliance within information security, customer service within information security, functions performed by IT groups outside of information security, and then functions performed outside of IT completely by non-technology uh, business organizations. All right, let's look a little bit more at security within this large organization now and, and, and peel it back some more. You're typically going to have a CISO, a computer information security officer, that's responsible for or has responsibility for information security functions. Um, you're going to have some full-time personnel that are deployed. Those de depends really on the culture and you know what, what what type of business you're actually in. Um, the more you personnel you can bring on board, the better it's going to be in terms of uh, being able to get all of the coverage uh, that you're going to need within that organization. So let's again look at uh, some typical structures. Here's one where you've got it uh, split out with technical security and risk management and policy in two separate groups. Here's one example of how you might configure. And then, of course, you've got some subgroups under that technical uh, 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 security uh, uh, component. Let's look at another example. Uh, here you've uh, flushed it out a little bit more. You've got technical security and compliance. Uh, and then you've, uh, uh, so instead of splitting on, uh, on policy and risk management, you've split based on um, compliance, and then you've got a risk assessment and a risk management group that are split out, and then some subgroups underneath your technical services that look at it uh, a different way. 
All right, well, good. I've given you uh, two structures for a large organization, talked about very large organizations, talked about the lesson objectives even uh, for this first video on organizing for security. And in the next video, we're going to come back and start looking at medium-sized companies, companies that are a bit smaller, and how they work within a uh, security organization.